In the ocean, there are millions of microscopic organisms called copepods. Because of their size, these animals burrow through the water like a mole in the dirt. To the tiny copepods, it's as if they are pulling themselves through honey because the ocean acts as a viscous fluid they have to maneuver through. If we zoom in on a copepod, we would see a very thin layer of fluid surrounding them known as a viscous boundary layer. This is like a science fiction force field that hugs their body's exterior as they pull themselves throughout the ocean. The thickness of the surrounding layer depends on how fast they can move, but what actually determines their speed? In the ocean, water's viscosity is lower in warmer temperatures and higher in colder temperatures. So on the surface, viscosity is lower because the water is warmer. This lower viscosity makes it easier for copepods to move. As a copepod travels deeper into colder waters, the viscosity increases and movement becomes more difficult. The force field around these copepods will expand or shrink depending on their speed and how viscous the water is. But with the viscous boundary layer, how are these copepods eating? Does their eating behavior change because of viscosity or temperature? By observing these copepods and testing the viscosity of seawater at different temperatures, we were able to study how they feed under different environments. Importantly, to make sure we were testing their feeding rates based on the water's viscosity and not its temperature, we artificially changed the viscosity of our seawater with a chemical called polyvinyl pyrrolidine, or PVP. This compound increases the water's consistency relative to the temperature, so we were able to make a solution of seawater that mimicked cold water viscosity but at higher temperatures. We gave the copepods some food, and by marking the difference between what they started with and what was left over in various conditions, we were able to figure out that feeding rate is determined by viscosity rather than temperature. As global warming changes our ocean's temperature, a better understanding of how these critical organisms feed will help us understand them and the food webs they support.